Jalen Duren. Al, let's talk about Jalen Duren. Because this name comes up for a few reasons here. Um, number one, two years ago, before the Knicks got Jalen Brunson, they had the 11th pick in the draft. This is when they were coveting Jaden Ivey. They were trying to trade up for him, or the rumors were they were trying to trade up for Jaden Ivey. They had number mm-hmm. 11. They ended up making a series of trades. Don't have to get into the, to the minutia of it, but they ended up making a series of trades in which they ended up going back into the draft, down into the draft, and then taking that pick, and which is a 13th pick, plus Kemba Walker's contract, the $9 million left of Kemba's contract, and sending that to Detroit, the Knicks' objective, get the salary cap flexibility to then go out and get Jalen Brunson, give him his money, the most uh, valuable contract in the league right now. And then Detroit, in turn, selected Jalen Duren, the big man from the Memphis the Memphis Tigers. Now, Jalen Duren right now, 19 years old, is on a tear. He's mm-hmm. on an absolute tear. For uh, sure. His, his last three games, 23-15 and two blocks, 82% shooting, 14-17, two blocks. 17, 14, and four blocks. So Jalen Dern is on an absolute tear right now, which makes a lot of some Knicks fans, some skeptics, wonder why the Knicks never kept this pick, taking him, because obviously they see Mitch Robinson. He's limited offensively. He's never going to have this type of game. And Jalen Duren, he's, he's, he's looking 19, bro. He's looking beastly out there. Are you telling me that you wanted Jalen Duran on this team? This, no, no, no. This is Mike. I'm the conductor, bro. I'm asking you the questions here, man. <laughs> Are you telling me that you wanted Jalen Brunson on this team? I did want Jalen Brunson on this I team. I mean, Jalen Duran. <laughs> 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 Got him. Got him. Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran. Uh, no, because Jalen Duran, like, the whole trade essentially set up the Knicks to have the cap space to get Jalen Brunson. Yeah. On top of that, we also got Isaiah Hartenstein. Yeah. And so unless your thought process was that you were not going to keep Mitchell Robinson, then I could have I could have seen that. That, But at the end of the day, the whole point of those moves was to get Jalen Brunson in-house and to keep some sort of continuity, especially for a guy like Tom Thibodeau who's looking to compete, right? So you're going to tell me now that at the most primo position that Tom Thibodeau looks for the defensive side of the ball, the center, the center position, he's going to take a rookie and wait to develop him. I just, that was never going to happen. So to me, the move for the Knicks to not draft Jalen Duran, instead to create cap space, to go get Jalen Brunson, have enough left over to go sign Isaiah Hartenstein, makes sense to me. I'm not too upset with it. Like you could be, you could be good, but to me, like I, I'm not upset about it because unless you're telling me Jalen Duran is going to become like a top ten guy in the NBA, mm-hmm. then I would be upset. Then I'd be like, oh wow, this is like the whole Steph Curry thing all over again. But if you're just telling me he's going to be a solid center, like to me, the center position is like the running back, man. Like unless like, you have some transcendent talent like Joel Embiid or Nikola Jokic, to me, like. Having a solid center, you can go find a lot of centers around the league. And if we've noticed, no one's getting the bag at the center position. They're kind of on the low end of like importance of what you need on a team. It's mostly wings and it's guards. So I'm not upset that the Knicks didn't draft Jalen Duran. He looks good, but to me, I'm like, I'd rather have Jalen Brunson on this team. Yeah. Um, couple things again Duran very very impressive right now man extremely impressive right now um I, I first got to see him last year when I went to summer league and even at, at 18 was very impressed with mm-hmm. with his game and and again at 19, 19 he's looking pretty crazy out there the Pistons overall look pretty good man Cade is is stepping his game up you got I saw Thompson is is showing some things my guy Alec Burks went off last night against the Chicago Bulls but that's a whole nother story and so the Pistons are are, are looking to uh to, to put it all together but anyway the thing about the Durant situation is that yes they needed the cap space to go get Brunson they got Hartenstein and the Knicks 
since they've since Tibbs has been here, has been on they've been on a compete now track where it's like if they're gonna go, they're not getting projects. They're not drafting projects. They're drafting players that can play right now. Right? They like it's not to say that they're not trying to develop players, but they need they're not looking for guys with with you know five six year development windows they need guys that can come in and play right now and yes over the course of their careers they'll get better but they need to be able to contribute at this moment and so based on where the Knicks were unless they were going to end up trying to get Ivy unless they were going to get a player like that they're not going to they, they, they were never going to take a player like a Jalen Duran and, and the whole point of Ivy was that he was supposed to be in, impactful from day one day one star star potential from day one that's what you're looking for especially mm-hmm. with Tibbs so is it buyer's remorse is it opportunity cost I don't really look at it that way even though he could turn out to be a good player I think the point is more so if you look at the Knicks free agent signings outside of Brunson outside of Hartenstein a lot of the guys that they picked up over the last three years have been to a couple things. One, yes, fill needs. Get vets to fill needs. You want to fill in your salary cap so, you, so you're not at the salary cap floor. But also to bring players in on team-friendly deals that you would have ultimately been able to move for that star player should that player come about. But what the Knicks found themselves in is that a lot of the free agent signings didn't have the effect that they wanted it to have. Especially Kemba and Fournier, because you're looking at a situation where they signed Kemba to the two-year deal, and you're saying, okay, well, $9 million isn't that much, but now they got to put an asset on top of it to get that money off the books. Now they're looking at Fournier. Are they keeping him for the major deal? Maybe. Is there a deal out there that, that they can get him off? Probably not. So, you know, you know, the 48 thing has kind of been the same thing over, over the years as well. So I think that's not issue. I don't want to say issue, but I think that's more been the interesting thing about this is that they haven't been able to move these players. And in the Kemba situation, they had to put that draft pick on there. That turned out to be Jalen Duren. So I, I think it's more so that than saying, well, they should have drafted this kid. Because right now... You got a star talent in Jalen Brunson who's fitting your needs and also filling, fitting in terms of the goal that you have to compete and ultimately contend. Yeah. I mean, look, they got they got Kemba. I forget what Kemba's contract. It was like six or either eight million, something like that. 17. Uh, two years, 17. Two so years, nine. It's nine. Yeah. So nine. So it's nine million, right? So you need to move that nine million. And you talk like, that's the freeing up the cap space that we talk about. Like the next move they did with the Pistons was the Burks, Noel, and two future second round picks. But they need to move all that money in order to open up space for Jalen Brunson to get his contract. So that's where it's like, unfortunately, and you know, with the Kemba Walker, the Kemba Walker situation is that let's not forget. Tibbs and Kemba had a big falling out, right? Where Tibbs wasn't communicating with Kemba. Kemba was like in, he was, he started off in the rotation, then was out of the rotation without really that much notice, was back into the rotation because everyone got COVID. And then, you know, after a few good games, he was back out of the rotation again. And so that relationship was severed. You had to move him because you can't just keep him on the, on the Knicks. Unlike Forney at the time, he was still playing even until the end of the season. So, and his contract was greater. So there might've been a little bit more challenge where Detroit was like, look, we're not really, we won't take Fournier. We can at least absorb Kemba's contract, but give us that draft pick. And then you get that future first. And then you get the cash base for this year. So it was, you know, the whole Durant situation, like it would have been nice to draft him. Sure. But if you drafted him, then we probably don't get Jalen Brunson. And then that, then we talk about not having the point guard that we have now. And I'd rather have the, 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 the position that we have not had sustained for such a long time, yeah. which is the point guard position. I'd rather have that taken care of than the center position. Duran looks awesome. I'm not taking yeah, that away yeah. from him. It's not about Duran's talent at this point. It's literally opening up the cap space 
to get Jalen Brunson on this team. LD, LD, go ahead and uh, and uh, mute your mic. Regarding the Jalen Duran thing, mm-hmm. I think it's pretty hilarious in having conversations with my fellow Knicks fans who are upset mm-hmm. that we didn't pick him with our draft pick, whatever the case may be. I found out, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people in this comments don't realize this. Mm-hmm. If y'all pissed about Jalen Duran, the current sitting NBA champions, their second best player, Jamal Murray, is our pick. <laughs> like, if you go back to the 2016 yeah, yeah. NBA draft, it's literally via the Knicks. So that's that's one thing. But I do want to mention something, right? The Knicks have not won in half a century. We have not won a championship since the birth of hip-hop, right? Why am <laughs> yeah, I bringing this right, up? Right, right. I'm going to just put this out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have not had hip-hop know what a Knicks championship is. Huh. But in regards to what Scott Perry is saying about why they chose to take the approach they did with the Donovan Mitchell trade. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we Knicks fans are impatient because, again, we haven't won anything in half a century. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to half a a quarter century. From 2000, teams, basically, you can actually go further back. The championships are built through the draft. The only person who has actually won via trading depth and youth is LeBron James. Everybody else from Kobe to Shaq, Shaq was a free agent, but Kobe was drafted. The Spurs dynasty through the draft, the Warriors dynasty through the draft, even Dirk's championship. Dirk is, a, you know, it's a Maverick, drafted mm-hmm, as a Maverick. Mm-hmm. I think our approach has to be more like the Chauncey Billup Detroit Pistons. Because history has shown that it's not through trading for superstars without having your own superstar in-house that is, it doesn't win championships if you don't have your own superstars in the house. It's only literally happened with LeBron James. When he goes yeah. back to Cleveland, when Kyrie was already drafted by the, by the um, Cavs, and then they brought, uh, what's his name, Kevin Love, or when he got to the Lakers, where they traded the youth for mm-hmm. AD. Mm-hmm. Apart from that, it's all in-house. So our approach has to be more like the Detroit Pistons with Chauncey Billups, Tayshaun Prince, you know, just incremental growth, and then you make one final switch for somebody like Rasheed Wallace, Mm-hmm. who can kind of take you to the next step. And yeah. you actually have to focus on playing fundamentally sound basketball sure, sure, to compete sure. against people who have already drafted, you know, superstars. Okay. That's kind of why I agree with what, what um, Scott Perry was saying. All right. Appreciate the call, man. Appreciate the call. JJ from Brooklyn. Yo, yo yeah. appreciate it, man. Yes, appreciate sir. it. Yeah, listen. To not say this starting thing is not a huge blunder is just false. This is going to be right up there with all the other Knicks mistakes, if not even worse. Why? This kid, listen, I, I, I have Lee Pass. I've watched all his games so far. I watch everybody. This kid's going to be, I mean, he already is. He's a monster. He's the total package. Listen, my issue with it too is, listen, we traded, Kem, we had to trade Kemba Walker. Mm-hmm. Kemba Walker to, to free up cap space to get Brunson. That's why we had to give up that pick. Yeah. When we should have never gave Kemba a multi-year contract in the first place. Why did we ever give him two years? There was no reason to do that. Yeah. That's what makes it so much worse. You yeah. can never sign Kemba for two <laughs> like, years. Like who the, the hell wanted? Who the hell wanted him for two? It's like yeah. no disrespect I mean, for like who wanted him that badly. Yeah. Who were they bidding against mean, to go Darwin? get Kemba? No, to go get Kemba. Oh right, exactly. Exactly. Why would you give him two years? One, whenever, that's fine. Give him, I don't care how much you give him for one year. But there's, when there were already signs that Kemba was, you know, towards the end. Yeah. We, we all knew that. The fact we gave him two years and we had to move his contract to get and get rid of that pick. Listen, Duran is going to be an absolute beast. Mm. This kid's 19 years old. He's dominating Bam out of bio. He's a freak. I'm telling you, man, this is going to be. An absolute huge, huge mistake. He should be a Nick, 100%. He should be a Nick. This, we're going to regret this to the fullest. It's going to be an epic, epic failure. I don't want to hear about Mitch. I'm sorry to the Mitch Hive. He's better in year two at 19 than Mitch is in year six. Way better. Not even close. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's chat. I would like to present this call for a vote, man. Rate that call in the chat. One being trash, five being facts. 